Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffles.com and today I'm showing you the full three pocket apron for these big guys, the chunky gnome. If you would like to learn how to make it, boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting with me and it helps me with this YouTube algorithm as well. So this is what we're going to be making today. You can make a two pocket or a three pocket. This is included in the Chunky Gnome pattern, which you can get down below. Oh, also just sign up for the newsletter. It's below too. Okay, so we're gonna need our pattern, some uh, fabric. We're gonna need something for our straps and iron pins scissors and a pressing pad or an ironing board. So I use this pressing pad because there's a couple of tricks uh, I've developed after so many years. <clears throat> but what we're going to do first, before you put your pattern on, go ahead and iron your fabric. Now speaking of fabric, you can use cotton, you can use cotton canvas. You just don't want to use something without uh, the ability to hold its shape. So you don't want to use something like fleece or crushed velvet. Those things curl up on themselves. But if you do use something with a nice um, weight to it. It holds the shape really well. So on the fold, I pinned the pattern and now I'm just using a rotary cutter and a cutting mat. You can cut this with scissors if you don't have this set up. Okay. All right. So take note of this seam allowance that's on the pattern. We're going to be transferring that to our piece right now. In order to do that, all you have to do is measure a half inch or so on each of the four flat sides. So we have two on the side, one very long one on the bottom, and then we have that flat side on the top. I get asked a lot, do I really have to iron before I sew? No, you don't, um, but I would strongly recommend it because it's gonna make your sewing very, very, very much improved. Um, I'm not a seamstress, so I will give you these tips and tricks and cheats to make it look good without being a seamstress. That's how I roll. All right, so on these curves, these are easier than people think. You just need to grab your scissors and create some snips. So about half an inch, just snip away an inch from the edge, then another inch, and then another inch. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up with these three snips that you can fold in, or these three flaps, I mean, that you can fold in. That's what we want, right? So I'm gonna show you here. Mine ends up being just a little shy of a half of an inch, but you wanna shoot for a half of an inch. Our inseam, or I'm sorry, our seam allowance is one quarter of an inch on when we top stitch. So you definitely don't wanna to go to one quarter of an inch. You wanna stay around a half inch. All right, so just make sure that this one over here is on top of the outside edge that you folded in earlier and press. Our, our string ties are gonna go right under that section, so we need that to be on top. So you can see here, I've got it all pinned, and here's how my ties are gonna end up going. I end up not using bright orange, because you could see it, but basically you're just gonna end up, so that's why you need to make sure you have something that can go underneath there, and you have enough room to stitch it on. So you just do this on the opposite side as well. Make your snips, make sure you've got enough of them in, oops, there you go. Um, and then here's where I realized, ooh, the orange is showing through. <laughs> so I have to change my entire color scheme for this guy. But we're going to go to the back of the fabric um, after we cut a couple of extra pieces. So I'm cutting my piece right here for the pocket. I'm cutting all of these ribbon ties. Again, in the Bistro Gnome video, in the pattern, I show you how to make your own ties. But for, for this, I wanted to use a pre-made ribbon. So I'm creating two waist ties, two neck ties, and I'm burning all of the ends so that they don't unravel or fray. So on the top, all I'm gonna do is just lift up the side and pop that right under there. Biggity bam, you're done. Do it on the other side. Biggity bam, we're gonna move on. This is easy, right? It's a beginner pattern, <laughs> gotta keep it easy. You're gonna tuck up the tie. We're actually gonna pull that closer towards the edge there. Tuck up those ties under the edge. And here you go. So I am going to give you a tip. We're going to be turning all of our clips the other way because we're going to top stitch. But for every place that has a tie, you're going to put two pins, one going one direction and one going another. And that is because when you're sewing, you want those straps to stay in place. So when you remove one pin to sew that area, 
you need the other one stabilizing it. So start down here, up, around, over the top, down, and then across all the way back. That's how you're going to top stitch it. You see my clips are now all facing the opposite side so that I can put the top of the fabric facing up and start stitching right there on that side. Start and reverse my stitches so it locks them in place. Go up straight. And then when I get to the strap, I'm going to actually reverse over that because if any place is gonna fail on our apron, it's gonna be the straps. So we want to make sure we get those well. So then I'm gonna pick up the presser foot, leaving the needle down, turn my fabric, and then go along this edge as well. So this over here is just one quarter inch along this curve. You can see I'm moving my presser foot up so that I can turn my fabric easily. There you go, do it again. And then I go all the way up and then I reverse my stitches over that top strap as well. And you see, I'm going so slow. I'm just picking up, moving, picking up, moving. You know, like it's a slow process to get the curves right, but I do recommend you go slow when you're doing things like the mittens and the thumbs uh, and the curves of the apron because it really will matter. All right, so for those of you who like to see things, like, like if you're sewing it yourself, here's over the shoulder view, and I'm just gonna go and reverse the stitches over that tie and then go all the way down the side edge. Again, picking up my presser foot, turning my piece, and then making sure I maintain the same seam allowance pretty much all the way down. You can see this is real time. This is not sped up, this is not slowed down. This is just how fast I'm going. Pretty slow, right? But it's on the curves, I think it really, really matters. Okay, so I am gonna speed this part up because at this point it's all the same thing. And then at the end, you'll see here, we've top stitched all the way around this apron. And we have all of our strings right in that bottom left corner. I'm going to find the front of my pocket after ironing it. And then all the way around the four edges, I'm gonna grab a ruler and measure half an inch. Now, why this matters on this is because this is going to be right on the front of your apron in a contrasting color. So what we want to make sure is that all of our edges are pretty much straight. Um, if you mess up, don't worry. Um, you should put that on the top. Um, if it's like a, just a little wobble, if it's a big wobble, maybe repress it. So after you do all four sides, here you go, the top and the bottom are what's important because the eye is automatically drawn to those, by the way. But you're going to find which side you want the top on and then fold under the edges. So those short edges, you're gonna want those under the top and the bottom flaps, and that'll just make everything really clean. So go ahead and lift up the bottom and the top flaps, fold that side in, and then put those back down. Do that on both sides. Snip off your threads from our sewing of our top stitch on the apron. And now you can find the center of your apron and just make sure you like where everything is measuring. So I always put my apron piece on there if it's too big or overpowering or whatever. So the first step is actually not on the apron, it's to top stitch just the pocket. So we wanna top stitch this pocket all the way, again, a quarter of an inch seam allowance starting and reversing our stitches at both the beginning and the end. And now we it's time to measure and actually put this down. So go ahead and find the center of your pocket, you know, the center of your apron. I like to poke into my pressing mat, so I put my pin straight down so that nothing moves when I do the next part, which is finding out where I really want my pockets. So you can see I've tacked them at two and five inches. I end up changing that because that's just too much of a difference in my pocket sizes. So now I'm just going to be moving these pins just about a quarter of an inch. This is 100% your preference. If you wanna go straight even, go straight even. But for me, I wanted it kind of like a bigger center pocket. So then I take all of the pins and I just make sure they are straight on the sides and move on to the middle of the pockets. So I do put them vertically. So I'm gonna be starting at that top line. So I'm gonna put the pins vertically so I can be sure to follow that vertical um, stitch. All right, so before we move on, this is what it looks like. You have the pocket pinned in its place and it's already top stitched. You're gonna start on one side, start and reverse your stitches, and then you're gonna go along the bottom, 
turn, start and reverse your stitches, and then go up back to that top line. Then remove it, go to the top line where the pocket is going to be, and go all the way down, starting and reversing your stitches. And this is what you get. Now you've made a pocket. You repeat that at your other marker line, and now you've made two pockets. <laughs> it's easy, right? I love simple sewing. I'm not a seamstress, so I have to have simple sewing. <laughs> but this is it. You can make one pocket, three pockets, two pockets. Let me know in the comments below what do you think. Also down below, sign up for that newsletter. I give tons of stuff away. All right, thank you for being here, everybody, and get that pattern link down below.